Hey what's up you guys, welcome back to my channel, if you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Lydia and if you are new here make sure you hit the subscribe button and join the growing family, turn notifications on, way down there give me a thumbs up because it really does help me out. Today we're doing a Q and A. Now I've got questions on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. So we have questions. I'm going to start with Instagram because that's where I got the most questions. A drink for my sponsor. <laughs> I wish. The first question is tools to help you when you, fe when you feel like you have no reason to be here. So this actually happened a couple of weeks and I mentioned it in a few videos but I was really suicidal a few weeks ago and I bought tablets to overdose on. But instead of taking the overdose, I went to my distraction box. If you want to see what a distraction box is, I'll link my video on the iCard up there. Because my distraction box literally saved my life. Again. So scrapbooking helps. Colouring helps. And... This co I love this colouring box. It's one of the ones I bought when I was in hospital. So, them things really help me when I'm suicidal. And, honestly, sleep helps the most. But, in seriousness, suicide is never the answer. It's taken me a long time to realise that. And, I've come a long way in my recovery now where I'm not suicidal anymore so those are the tools that I use when I'm suicidal the question is how long have you been in recovery so I didn't know what recovery was until I was about 18 years old but how long have I seriously been focused on recovery would have to be about three years ago when I was admitted to hospital in section 3 Given I didn't immediately, as soon as I got admitted to start recovery, immediately I smashed a window to get the glass and to try and climb through it. But I couldn't have fit through the, this, this window. <laughs> so, that's... But in my defence, I was very unwell. And... According to my family, and my GP, and my psychiatrist, I had a breakdown, so it wasn't just unwell, I had a literal breakdown, which is why my memory is so shit about the first part of my sectioning, because I literally have no memory of being sectioned that time. I don't remember seeing an amp, I don't remember seeing a uh, section 12 approved doctor, I don't remember them telling me that I was on section 2. I have no memory at all, so do with that as you will. But yeah, my recovery started when I was in hospital and I'm happy to say that I am doing a lot better now and I'm at a very good point in my recovery. Next question is, what was your first manic episode like? Oh, I was 13 years old. I had just started doing YouTube, not on this channel, on another channel, and I spent a ridiculous amount of money because I'd inherited some money off my great nan who sadly passed away due to cancer. Um, I spent about an, about two thirds of what I'd inherited and I can't even remember what I spent the money on. I should have spent it on getting a camera but <laughs> I was originally going to train in health and social care and then I did A level health and social care and I changed my mind. But I also did media at the same time and yeah. Anyway, I'm going off topic. My first manic episode, I spent a lot of money. I got sectioned. I got a lot done. I took on loads of new projects to do with charities. Though my memory from the manic episode is very scattered. I can't remember exactly what I was doing, but I know I took on loads of projects and spent loads of money. Well, my first manic episode was pretty serious. Like I said, it got me sectioned, so... And I was diagnosed bipolar type 1. Those of you who don't know, I have recently been diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder, bipolar type. So I don't have bipolar 1, I have schizoaffective disorder. Next question is, how does schizoaffective disorder affect you? 
So schizoaffective disorder affects me in the sense that I have hallucinations and delusions and sometimes I get manic, sometimes I get depressed. But it affects me in the sense I have hallucinations and the main hallucination that I have is a shadow figure running across my room. Now I sleep in a pitch black room and the light from outside, because I have blinds not curtains, shines enough in that I can still see my room and I still see these shadow figures running across the room and it is terrifying and yes I'm on an antipsychotic but that doesn't mean it takes away all the psychotic symptoms honest thoughts on DBT oh lordy 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 oh no so I've done DBT twice and I've done intensive DBT twice Honestly, it wasn't the big cure to my BPD. It didn't help at all. And I used some skills from DBT and I've got self-led DBT books. But my honest thoughts on DBT are, yes, it's a fantastic course to go on. And if you have BPD, I would recommend going on the course. However, for me, the issue was, is I knew the skills, you know, you get taught the skills, but you don't get taught how to implement them, which was my biggest issue with it. So it was pretty hard to deal with because, yes, I know all the skills, but how the fuck do I implement them? For me, DBT was not the answer. But then again, my BPD is not my main issue. My main issue is schizoaffective disorder. What has been your go-to coping mechanisms in the past few weeks? Um, well, last week I was at my grandparents, so that helped a lot because I was away from London. For anyone who doesn't know, I, I'm the only one in my family that lives in London. All my family live in the West Midlands and Shropshire. I had moved to London to go to university but now i finished university and I live in supportive living. I'm staying in London so yeah. But my coping mechanisms have been colouring. I took a colouring book with me to my grandparents, filming YouTube videos, reading a book, having fidget toys with me because my bag has this little what thing here and in there I've got a tangle toy and a fidget cube and honestly just having people to message and obviously taking my medication has been a big coping mechanism because my medication helps keep me alive and out of hospital what's been the hardest thing to get on with on top with mental health wise the hardest thing for me to get on top with was definitely my anxiety now you might be wondering Lydia you're diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder is that not harder no, it's easier. Schizoaffective disorder is a psychotic disorder. You experience psychotic symptoms. So, no, schizoaffective disorder wasn't the hardest. The hardest for me has been my anxiety. A few weeks ago, I literally couldn't leave my flat. I had to order in food every day. And even opening the front door to get the food was so much anxiety. Anxiety provoking. It was awful. And I honestly don't know what caused my anxiety to get so bad because I, I go ice skating on my own, I film myself in public. It's just complicated. My anxiety has definitely been the hardest thing to get on top of though. Now we've got Twitter. First question is, where do you see yourself in five years? What are your goals for the next five years? In five years, I see myself living in my own flat or house, having a job that I like, potentially having a baby. I really want a baby. <laughs> I, I don't, I, I mean, I can't afford a baby at the minute, but I really want to have a kid, so, yeah. Not be under mental health services anymore. What are your goals for the next five years? My goals are to, to do better on YouTube, because I want to carry on doing YouTube. I mean, I did spend nearly £2,000 on a camera, so... I'd quite like to, to continue doing YouTube. <laughs> I see myself doing YouTube. I see myself improving with my mental health. I don't know what else. I don't really plan for the future. 
I'm grateful to live in each moment because my suit last suit my major suicide attempt nearly killed me and it's scary how close to death I actually came without realizing it because I was going through a breakdown and honestly I like taking things day by day obviously I have appointments and stuff that I have to go to so I don't really plan for the future but there are things I want to achieve the next question is how is your recovery going? Do you find it hard to stick to recovery or do you, do you find it easy somehow? So my recovery is going pretty well. I've been out of hospital a year and... a year and three months and that's pretty impressive. Especially if you followed me for a long time on here, you know that honestly I was in and out of hospital. Like one week I was out of hospital, the next I was in, out, in, out, in, you put your right foot in, your right foot out, in, out, in, out, and shake it all about. We do the hokey cokey and we turn around, and that's what it's all about. Whoa, the hokey cokey. Fucking hell, I can't believe I can remember them words. Jesus Christ. Do I find it hard to stick to recovering? Um, not really. I do trigger myself because PTSD but honestly I find it quite easy to cope with the recovery. I said I have my moments, like a few weeks ago I needed to an overdose, a few weeks ago I nearly ordered blades to self-harm with. It's just complex. That's all the questions from Twitter, now we go on to YouTube. YouTube, YouTube. First question is, could you list each of your diagnoses? So physical health wise, we have arthritis, POTS, type 1 diabetes, and we have ADHD, autism. Then my mental health wise, we have schizoaffective bipolar type, BPD, EDNOS, PTSD, anxiety. They are my diagnoses. Next question is, what do you do if someone close to you is struggling with mental health issues but enjoys hurting you and making you feel bad? Be straight with them. Just tell them that they're hurting you. And if it continues, honestly, just try and separate yourself from this person. They clearly don't have your best interests at heart if they enjoy hurting you. And yes, they might be suffering with a mental illness, but mental illness does not make people assholes. But first thing to do is definitely talk to them about it, because they might not know they're making you feel bad. If they do know they're making you feel bad and they're doing it deliberately, they're twats. The next, ooh, three questions. Okay. Could medical conditions be classed as mental health conditions? Not necessarily. I have physical health issues and I have mental health issues, but no, they don't overlap. The type 1 diabetes did impact my anxiety a lot because it kind of came out of nowhere. I didn't realise how high my blood sugars were because I had no reason to check them, so I didn't. So question 2. Is flupentixel... I can't say that word a good antipsychotic medication for hallucinations and being paranoid. I have no idea. I'm not a professional. I don't try to be a professional. I'm not trained to be a professional. I've never been on it, so I can't comment. Number three. How often do you see a psychiatrist? Where am I see him every two years? I'm a careful co every two weeks for an hour. Jesus. Two years? I see my psychiatrist, technically speaking, every three week, every three months. And my care co, I don't know. She doesn't talk to me. And when she says she's going to phone, she doesn't phone. Next question is, have you experienced stigma associated with EPD slash BPD diagnosis in hospital? Yes. I made a video on this when it happened, but I basically got discharged from hospital from being on section two because borderlines shouldn't be in hospital. That was the reasoning I was given for my discharge. And um, literally f four hours later, I was resectioned and I went back to the same hospital. So that was embarrassing, but definitely a lot of stigma. And that is all the questions for the questions. And if you do have any questions you want me to answer in a future Q&A, please comment them down below and I will be sure to make a Q&A about that. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Peace.